Welcome to the tutorial Advanced Traditional Animation Tools for Anime Pro. Once again, these videos are being produced by Annie Roderick. So Annie is indicating the X sheet view, and as we go into it, we can see that she's marked several of her drawings with the key drawing indicator and several drawings with the breakdown indicator. So going back into the drawing view, Annie's gesturing at the easy flipping toolbar and the flip toolbar. And you can access those toolbars by going to Windows, Toolbars, Easy Flipping, or just Flip. So the easy flipping toolbar has two arrows on it, one that faces left and one that faces right. By clicking on these buttons, you can move forwards and backwards through the various drawings that you've created in your scene one at a time, much in the same way that an animator would do with several sheets of paper. By having the loop option checkmarked, you're able to scroll back to the first drawing from the last drawing in your scene and from the first drawing to the last drawing, so it creates an, an actual loop in your scene. And then by grabbing the slider and moving back and forth, you can quicken the pace in which you flip through several drawings at once. So the flip toolbar contains three buttons, one that has a K, one that has a B, and one that has an I. And this is linked to the way that you marked your key drawings, breakdowns, and in-betweens in the X sheet. So if you depress or click on the K button, um, and then you start doing your scrolling back and forth, either by scrubbing or just individually going through drawings, the program will jump between key drawings and altogether skip any breakdown or any drawings marked breakdown or in between. And you can do that with just the breakdown drawings, just the in between drawings, or a combination of drawings. So you can have both keyframe and in betweens um, pressed in at the same time, and then the computer will just basically skip the breakdown drawings. Okay, so now Annie is indicating the onion skin toolbar, and it works much in the same way as the flip toolbar, only you have to use it in conjunction with the show onion skin mode, which is located at the bottom of the left-hand side toolbar. So now Annie right-clicked on the drawing view toolbar and chose the uh, menu item customize, and here she's selecting all the onion skin um, option buttons. and she's adding them to the drawing view toolbar and then saying OK. So with these extra buttons what you can do is you can select the number of previous and next drawings that you'd like to see with the click of a button. So if you select the key drawing mode from the onion skin toolbar and then you have show two drawings previous or show three, three next drawings then you'll be able to see just the key drawings in that span. And I don't know if you noticed, but as Annie clicks through the various um, onion skin options, the blue indicators on either side of the red playhead change to match her selection. And the one thing that I forgot to mention is that both the flip toolbar options as well as the onion skin toolbar options only work in the drawing view so don't try using any of them in the camera view. So Annie's just setting up to show you the shift and trace feature in Animate Pro. Sometimes when you're animating it's very easy to lose sight of the proportions or the volume of your character especially when you have to do dramatic things like scale your character or squash or stretch it. So Anime Pro has a feature where you can take a drawing of your character, uh, perform some type of transformation on it, then in another cell trace that transformation and then bring all of those drawings back into the timeline exactly as they should be. So Annie's going into the X sheet and then clicking and shift and clicking on the first six drawings that she's created and then right-clicking and selecting the menu item, Send Drawings to Drawing View. Then in the drawing view, you'll notice a new window on the right-hand side, and it has the six drawings that she selected. The first button that she just clicked on is the Shift and Trace button, and you know that it's on or enabled by the 
uh, registration marks at the bottom of the page. Then by both checking and selecting that drawing, so there's a blue highlighted window around it, Annie selected the Shift and Trace tool so that she can then manipulate that drawing in the drawing view. And this is the drawing that you'd like to um, change or transform in some way so that you can keep the proportions so that you can do an accurate trace. So by enabling the onion skin she can show you that she's offset her drawing and you can see that because in the next drawing indicated in green um, a registration marks are slightly lower. So she's showing you that with the shift and trace tool, you're able to rotate, scale, and skew. But all these things are done in relation to the pivot, um, which she brought up by alt-clicking on the drawing view. And you can see that pivot in the middle. You can always reposition the pivot and then have a new center for rotation, scaling, and skewing. So Annie's decided to both scale, rotate, and reposition uh, the first drawing, and now she's selected the second drawing cell, and she's going to trace that transformation. And of course, once again, you need to use the onion skin mode and the onion skin features to be able to see the drawing that you've transformed on drawing one to be able to trace it on drawing two. So now that she's finished, Annie clicks on the shift and trace button again to disable the mode. And so you can see now both drawing one in its original state, which is in red, and drawing two, that's a trace of the transformation of drawing one. and now she's removing all the selected drawings and once everything's been removed the computer will default back to um, the regular drawing mode so you're out of the shift and trace mode and um, you're back in the drawing view and the one button that she didn't show you was the third one in the row in the new little window in the drawing frame um, that was to reset view so if you've made a bunch of transformations and you don't like it you can always reset and start again so the next thing we're going to show you are the additional layers that exist for all your drawings. So Annie's circling their location at the bottom left hand corner of the drawing view. The four layers are the underlay layer, the color art layer, the line art layer, and the overlay layer. So right now the underlay layer is selected and on that layer we have a sketch of the rabbit's head. Annie just switched the mode to the line art layer and when she clicks on the preview button, you can see all four layers displayed at the same time. So she selected from the preview underlay, so you can now see the sketch on the underlay layer, even though she's in the line art mode. And in the line art mode, she's sketching a nice clean version of the rabbit. So the underlay layer is often used for sketching as it is here, but it is also used for generating a mat for line tests, and we'll show you how to do that after.
So now Annie's finished her clean line art and she's disabling the preview mode so that you can only see what's on the line art layer or on the underlay layer. So you can see the difference between the sketch and the clean line art. And then in the color art layer you can see that it's completely empty. So going back to line art mode, she selects the select tool and then selects all of her line art. Then in the tool properties panel, she clicks on the create color art from line art button. Then when she goes back to the color art mode, you can see that invisible lines have been created from the line art in the line art mode. Then she selects the stroke tool to close up any um, open gaps or unclosed shapes. Then from the color palette she starts painting in um, the zones. And then if she clicks on the preview mode one more time, you can see both the line art together with the color art. And then just the line art and just the color zones. And then the original sketch in the underlay layer. So the last drawing layer to talk about is the overlay layer. So on this layer, you can have many things. Um, people often use them to sketch to add annotations, um, to put on corrections, um, also to have highlight and tone zones, um, also just as a regular layer. So say you have an extra item you'd like to add to your character, such as a pair of glasses that you don't want on all the time, you can store them in the overlay layer. So this is Annie drawing the zone for where you can add some tone or highlight. Okay, so the last thing we're going to show you is how to generate a mat for your animation. So sometimes as you're drawing your rough animation, you need to send out a little render, um, kind of a test to show people. And often when you have overlapping characters, it's hard to tell what's going on. So what you can do is you can generate a mat, so just sort of a flat layer of color uh, behind your line art. And you can send this mat either to the underlay layer or to the um, color art layer. So in this case, Annie's showing you that she's back on the line art layer, so her sketch is on the line art layer. Then using the select tool, she selects all of her line art from one cell of her drawing layer, and then goes to the top menu and selects Drawing Auto Matte. So in the Auto Matte dialog box, you can choose to apply to all drawings, which will generate a matte for all the drawings in the same drawing layer. You can also choose the radius, so you can play around with it to see how faithful it is to your lines if you want to have um, more of a, a webbed or a rounded shape around your line art or if you want it very faithful, um, almost touching your line art. Um, you can choose your source art layer, so in this case it's our line art layer, but from the drop down you can select any of the four. And then the destination art layer, and in this case it's the underlay layer, but once again, like we said, you can also send it to the color art layer. Then you have the option to clear the destination art first. So if there was anything on the underlay layer, the program will delete those drawings from the underlay before rendering um, the mats on the underlay layer. And then you can choose to copy strokes to destination. So a lot of times people like to actually have the sketched layers on the underlay layer along with the, the mat because they plan to get rid of the sketches later on anyway and that way they'll always remain on the underlay layer for safekeeping. And now by clicking on the underlay layer we can see that indeed there is a mat there. And then on the line art layer we can see the sketch and then if you click on the preview layer you can see the line art and the underlay together and you can see that it appears for not just the cell that was selected but for both the cells in the drawing layer.
So that's pretty much it for the tutorial Advanced Traditional Animation Tools and it's also the final video in the Traditional Animation series.